A24, when Hollywood says that's just too weird, even for us, especially now by today's standards. It's really interesting to see how this little indie company has just completely blown up. So I decided, since I'm pretty much a giant advocate for this company, I thought, you know what? I'm going to watch all 143 of their movies and just rank them all. So here we are today with a new yearly tradition where I will try to slowly build up watching every single A24 movie and then rank them all in a video. So welcome to the first year of the A24 big ranking thing. So far, I have seen 39 A24 movies in this first year. And so I'm going to rank them all today. All right, let's go over how this is going to work first. I'm just going to give the bottom five, the, the, the shit canniest bottom five worst A24 movies, little reviews. And then I'm just going to work all the way up the rest with just short little words because I'm not going to review all of them. And then I'm just going to give maybe the top five or top ten. I don't really know. So I'm just going to put in post how many I'm going to do. And then... I'll just give the top best ones reviews of their own as well. All right, let's let let's just do this because th this is gonna kill my voice. All right, bottom five. <laughs> Did anybody watch Woodshock like at all? And for the people who have watched it, then how do you defend this thing? Because I don't get it. It really feels more like one of those giant videos that plays on museum screens rather than something actually narrative. False positive is just really i don't know it's really trying to be some kind of peter pan story i think but it really just falls apart for how f genuinely forgettable it is also who the hell put pierce brosnan in there stop letting sophia coppola cook i <laughs> huh i honestly thought the bling ring would be something that was just ironically enjoyable but then it just turned out to be really boring and the ending just God, well, huh. The Humans is fine in retrospect if you like movies based on plays. But also, if you're just looking for a casual viewing, you're probably going to find this really tedious to get through. I got done seeing this a couple days ago, and I honestly think that deceptive marketing just... I, I, I hate it. I honestly thought Medusa Deluxe was going to be a really, really good movie because... I like the one-shot movies like Birdman in 1917, but then it just turned out to be really boring to get through. So was a trend with a lot of these things, to be perfectly honest. Okay, everything in between and then we can get to the top seven. <laughs> the Monster, a solid little horror movie, but also a very good message about alcohol. Free Fire, a little bit of a clunky action comedy, but at least Daddy Oppenheimer's in it. Men, very good if you like horror, but also very bad if you like Alex Garland. Tusk. I mean, holy shit, there's no leg there. Minari, a nice little movie about family, but also it kind of leaves your mind after a while, but it's it's still, it's a little bit, a little bit of it's still there. Lamb, a very weird movie that I don't know why I saw it in theaters, but I'm glad I did because, what? The Lobster, very, very messed up, but also very hilarious, but that third act is just a slog. Green Room, this one rips ass. It's the most metal horror movie you'll ever see in a while. Mississippi Grind, a little bit depressing, but also, like, it's, it's really carried by Ryan Reynolds. Under the Skin, Scarlett Johansson's dirtiest movie, but also the most jelly movie. Mid-90s, a nice little flashback to early times, which were kind of forgettable but also times that made a lot of memories for people. Midsommar, not really Ari Aster's best, but still very good with big scares, big production, big runtime, and also big peanut. It comes at night, very messed up towards the end, but also very, very, very suspense filled. Swiss Army Man, there's a lot of man ass, that's all I have to say. The Whale, people are mixed on it, but also it's really carried by Brendan Fraser, and the score, cinematography, direction, like everything. Bodies, 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 the best twist in the horror comedy you will ever see in the modern age. Enemy, there's two Jake Gyllenhaals, which really just elevates everything better when you realize how really messed up it is in retrospect. A Ghost Story, a very poignant movie about loss, and also really in depth from that one dude who speaks in that scene. After Sun, you will really look at family in a much different light. 
and it would probably make you respect them more. Come on, come on. These two are adorable. You can't help but love them. Luck, a whole movie that takes place only in a car, but is also a really simple story to get through, which makes you enjoy it a lot more. The Witch, a movie that really does give you a slap in the butter. Bo is Afraid, a three-hour hallucinogenic trip that... You just gotta watch it, y'all. X, a very, very good callback to 80s slashers with really good characters that aren't just meatbags waiting to die. Good Time, the Safdie brothers' biggest breakthrough, and also the one that really just... It just keeps you on the edge of your seat. The Killing of a Sacred Deer. I mean, how can you make spaghetti terrifying? The Lighthouse, which is a movie the Oscars really needed to respect more with the actors, but I mean, come on. Who needs the Oscars anyway when you have these two blokes running around? All right, and now we're at the top seven. Let's end this thing so I can actually take a breath. They ain't believe in us. God did. God did. God did. So my sister describes Uncut Gems as two hours of people just yelling at each other, but I think that's kind of the point. Sure, it may be two hours of people just yelling at each other, but at least things actually happen in it. It has good direction. It's one of Adam Sandler's much better movies than what he's done recently. Never forget Jack and Jill. It has a very good score from the best boy himself, Daniel Patton. It has a cameo from The Weeknd. You already know how I feel about that one. And it's got a pretty good story that seems a little bit off at first, but the further you go into it, the more the layers start to peel back and you just understand why it's two hours of people just yelling at each other. Bet you didn't think this one was so high up. What's great about Talk To Me's horror is that it's not particularly just jump scares, but it's more just really, really brutal horror. Like, every single horrifying moment in this movie is just absolutely brutal for no reason, but it works so well. And it's also probably one of the best YouTuber movies since Fred the Movie out there. Actually, no, the whole Fred trilogy. It's also interesting to see how they're probably going to set up some kind of sequel, despite the fact that there wouldn't really be much of a sequel to make, but that doesn't matter because I want like 30 more of these. Hereditary is a classic. It's the one movie that really brought A24 to like masterpiece status. And it's also just a masterpiece of a movie in general. Ari Aster is like some kind of unhinged genius because he goes from creating familial horror to familial horror to familial horror he, he he's so versatile and i think it's also the fact that it's just it's just really creepy in general there's also like no jump scares it's good though it's got very creepy score very creepy atmosphere very creepy acting very creepy naked women it's it's it's, it's a whole lot but it's so great. Pearl is not a horror movie. It's more or less just a drama with horror elements, but I think that works so well because, as you can see, this is higher than X. I think that this is better than X. I think the next movie that's going to come out is probably going to be on the same par as X, but is also, but th th this movie is just better than X. It uses its Wizard of Oz type of old style of filmmaking so well that it almost feels like it did come from that time. I don't know why people keep ripping on Maya Goth. I think that she's great. Like, she's, like, genuinely really great. She was fine in X, but in this movie, she's just really, really good. Especially with that monologue that goes on for, like, 10 minutes, I believe. It also has a very early time score, which is very, very refreshing to see in a movie of this caliber. Past Lives is probably a little better than Spirited Away. mean that past lives is ow i think that past lives is on par with spirited away but it's also maybe just a little bit better than it sure there may be some kind of generic plot but you know what this movie does that generic plot well the whole thing of two people going back together after like multiple decades that doesn't matter. It's a good movie. It does so much well. And the further you go into it, the more really surprising things that start to happen that just really elevate it up a lot more. This thing will probably be out of its theater run soon, but if you're near a theater where, where this movie is playing, just go watch it. Watch it with a crowd. I, I really emphasize you watching it with a crowd. Quite frankly, I'm a little shocked that this is number two, but Everything Everywhere All at Once is probably A24's best movie, even though this is number two. I mean, literally, come on. How could you not like it? It's two and a half hours of multiverse shenanigans that Marvel couldn't even top. And you know how Marvel is. They don't even pay their VFX workers. This definitely deserves to be A24's highest grossing movie. And their first IMAX release too, because this thing is like 
big. There's a lot of flashing images, but I don't even care. <laughs> I would <laughs> I would have a seizure and still watch this movie. Although Jamie Lee Curtis definitely should not have won that Oscar. This is just a really good movie. It's got very good action and choreography. It's got very good direction from the bros who brought a Swiss Army man. It's got a very, very haunting score at times. And each part that it's split up in just equally brings on a really unhinged energy that just, it's, it warms my little heart. If you're a time traveler who's able to go back to last year while this is in a theater, just go watch it. Watch it with the crowd. Please, I beg of you, come on, daddy. We made it to the number one spot. I'm finally going to reveal what the best A24 movie is. Personally, to me, in my opinion, all the letterbox uses out there, my opinion, the best A24 movie, a glimpse inside the mind of Charles Swan III. Now, the best A24 movie is actually Marcel the Shell with Shoes on. This movie just hits me so deep on a personal level that it's not even funny. It perfectly blends together stop motion and live action together, but that's not even the big part of it. The big part of it is that it's somehow able to capture grief in 89 minutes better than any other movie in two hours. The world is so small and the movie's runtime is very small, but you're able to learn so much and just really connect with the characters that... You start to really relate to the shells after a while. It's got very good direction from a guy who I still think is probably going to make a subpar Lilo and Stitch live action remake, but that doesn't even matter. We're not even talking about that. It's got very good direction. One of my favorite scores of all time. A very well-written screenplay. And just so many other things that I cannot say here for time reasons, but if... It, I really emphasize that you go watch this movie. It may be PG, but does that even matter with this? Literally anybody can watch this and relate to it. At least I think so, anyway. Literally, watching this in a theater just left me in silence the whole ride back. You have to watch this movie before you croak. And all those reasons I just said are a perfect encapsulation of why I think that this is the best A24 movie out there.